Welcome to this tech tip on utilizing iMates with factory assets. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be working through this tech tip with you today. Now before I start talking about utilizing iMates on factory assets, I wanted to give you a quick tour of the data set I'll be using for this demonstration. I work with Imaginet Technologies as an application engineer in the Virginia Beach area and we just moved into a new office. And as part of that move, I used the factory design suite to lay out our new office space. And the factory design suite did an amazing job helping me lay out our new office space. I have it up here inside of the Navisworks application. And let's go ahead and take a tour of our new office. We'll walk in our front door into our foyer area. We have the signs that welcome everyone to our office. And you can immediately walk back into our classroom. We've got another viewpoint over here of our classroom. We've got a really nice classroom. We can fit up to 10 students in our classroom. And of course, we have experts on any type of Autodesk software you can imagine. Uh, ready to go, ready to train uh, you and your group whenever you want. Now, if I walk out back into the foyer, I'll walk down the hallway. And of course, we have a kitchen over here to the left, which supports you know, our staff and our students. And we'll walk down here to a conference room. And I'll walk back down the hallway. We've got some account managers and some administrators that work in these offices. And then I'm going to get back to the cube farm. This is where I work. I actually work back in this cube in the back corner here. You can see I've got my inventor poster and uh, my AutoCAD mechanical desktop poster up on the wall there. Now, I was laying out the cube farm and really was amazed at how well the factory design suite made this. It was just so easy to do. Uh, every single piece was basically an asset. And, you know, I had an asset for the walls. I had an asset for the desktops. I had an asset for the shelf. Now, I ran into a couple of issues, though. Typically, when we connect assets together with the factory design suite, we want to set it up to where if one asset's connected to another asset, the um, connector classes automatically update the new asset to match the one that's existing. And in this particular case, that is not what I wanted. I've got a number of cases in this cube farm, if I were to walk down here, where I do not want the assets to resize with each other. They have to be kind of independent. Uh, so we had to build those in. And I also had some other issues with uh, the desktop and the uh, the desktop and the shelf and how they were going to connect to the other existing assets. Now as you're looking at this demonstration I want you to remember that I didn't have a lot of time. This was a very quick project. I needed to get it done uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, so I ended up utilizing iMates quite a bit for a number of the assets so that I could use the iMates to snap the assets together instead of relying on the factory design suite connectors. So I've opened up my inventor application and I wanted to show you how I went about putting the walls up first. I actually created my own custom assets so I'm going to open up my user asset folder and I'm going to come down to my office cube category and let's start by dragging in. These are basically classic assets, very simple. I utilized the connectors so that I could snap them together very easily. Of course, with typical asset workflow, I can select the asset and I can change the properties that uh, I have set up. In this case, the length of that particular wall is 30 inches. There's a post that goes here at the corner, and this is how, if you look, this is how the connectors basically allow me to go around a corner or make corners. And I do need to set the height of this to 66 inches. Now, this is very uh, typical of assets. Uh, typically, when we do assets, and they're all the same size, well, we would set up a connector class so that one asset or the new asset would automatically conform to the existing asset. But that's not what I needed here. Let me show you why. Let's go ahead and drop in this wall. And the height of the wall changes here to 54 inches. And the length is 24. And then I have another wall. The length of this one is 5 feet. 
but the height is different again. So the height in this case is 42 inches. So it was important that as I was laying this uh, assets out for the cube wall, that I left myself uh, enough room so that they would be completely versatile. So actually keeping them simple allows that to happen. Now I'm going to uh, pause the recording here and go ahead and place the rest of uh, the walls and we'll get into utilizing iMates. Now that I have the rest of the walls in place, I want to focus on how I created the desktop asset. Now I have this file open. This is the original file I used to create the asset. And I wanted to go through the process of adding an iMate. We need to add a potential mate to this face. We will find the iMate command on the Manage tab on the Author panel right here. Now if you've never used iMates before, it's fairly simple. It's literally one half of a constraint. The dialog box is exactly the same dialog as you would see utilizing the constraint command in an assembly. Now in this case, I want to set it up for a mate, and I'm simply going to select the face right here. I'll click OK, and that adds the necessary iMate. Now, if I go over here to Environments and activate the Asset Builder, I wanted you to see the rest of the asset information I have here. I've set up a landing surface, and the landing surface is, let me go ahead and activate that for a minute. Uh, I've accounted for the distance the desktop sits above the landing surface, so the desktop will automatically come in at the right height. So we've got the height of the desktop already set up, and I'm actually tracking the length and width. And that's it. That's all I'm tracking on this particular asset. So I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to jump back over to the assembly, and I actually want to use that desktop. So back over in our main assembly, I'm going to drag the desktop over, and I'm going to go ahead and position it. I'll use the rotation tool to position it. And to place it, I'm going to use the iMates. Now when you use an iMate, you typically hold the Alt button down, then you left click dragging the iMate to the desired face. And you actually get a little audio notification there, a little pop, when it actually places the iMate. So again, I hold or I select the asset, hold the Alt button down on the keyboard, and then left click and drag the iMate to the desired face. And it's very, very easy. Uh, to place assets this way. Again, I just use Factory Design Suite to help me position the original asset. And then I use the iMate to place it where I need it. We'll scoot this down a little bit. And you can also drag one iMate, Alt-Drag, to another iMate, and they'll snap together. So all I have to do now is come in and change the length of this counter or this desktop. So again, let me pause the recording and add the rest of the desktops. Now that I have the desktops in place, it's time to add the shelving units. Again, just like the desktop, I did the same thing here. I created an asset with the landing surface automatically supplying the right height for the shelf. Go ahead and drag this in position over here. And then we'll simply use an iMate to position the shelf up against the wall. I'll add another one very quickly here. Use an iMate to place it. And then we can snap these two iMates together. And we simply change the length as required. I also have some drawer units to place, and I used iMates on that asset as well. I'll simply drag this in, we'll drag it over and position it, and then I'll use the iMates to help me place it accurately. Again, holding the Alt button down, I will drag the asset over and connect it to the cube wall. And it, this is a flush asset, so I can actually drag it back and have it line up flush with the edge of the desktop. So 
So this is going to conclude our tech tip on utilizing iMates with factory assets. I hope you got a lot out of this tech tip, and I hope you get a chance to utilize iMates on the next asset that you create.